Welcome. Uh, this is the Educator Effectiveness and Implementation Tools for EE e session of the 2024 WISE Data Conference. Thank you for coming. Appreciate you being here. Uh, happy to be here with you folks. Um, first, just a little bit about me. My name is Jacob Paulnagel. I go by Jake. I'm an education consultant with the Licensing Educator Advancement and Development Team. Um, I've been with DPI working on EE since 2013, since before full implementation started. And I've been working on EE policy, evaluation of the system, communication for the EE system since 2015. Uh, recently, I completed a Master's of Public Affairs at the Robert M. LaFault School at UW-Madison, um, but uh, happy to be with DPI and happy to be with all of you. A little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so we're going to be talking about Wisconsin EE System Foundations. Uh, we're going to be talking about what kind of tools there are available to support the implementation of EE in Wisconsin, and uh, hopefully have some time to take some questions from you all about what's going on out there. Um, so as your agenda should have noted, this is a presentation style um, uh, spot today. Um, so not you know, a, uh, a live um, feedback session, but uh, I will, you know, of course, take your questions. And if I can't help you, I will make sure that uh, we follow up and, and get someone to help you. All right. Um, so there's a number of us in the room today. Uh, I guess we want to know a little bit uh, about uh, who you are, um, whether you're currently using um, our frontline education or our Google platforms and uh, maybe have a little bit of discussion amongst yourselves about what your vision for educator effectiveness is in your school or district. Uh, so first, uh, how many school administrators do we have here? And district administrators. And um, maybe someone who's uh, working specifically with frontline as a technical person. Got one hand over there. All right, so lots of district staff. Any any other roles out there that I should be aware of? Great, great. Um, well, thanks for being here. And can I get a raise of hands? How how many of your schools or districts use Frontline? Oh wow, the vast majority. Okay. Um, and then, so I assume the others are, are using something else, maybe our Google Forms or something locally developed. Okay. Um, and ideally, you're sitting sort of close to someone. Um, and since there's so many of us, uh, we maybe have you like turn to uh, uh, somebody near you and, and talk a little bit about um, what your vision for EE in your school or district looks like.
be happy about and we'll we'll try to keep those conversations going throughout. Hopefully this is not too much of a sit and get. Okay. So interesting thing I'm hearing out there is that there's like a number of levels of familiarity with the Wisconsin Educator Effectiveness System, um, which is good because this presentation is kind of perfect for that. So, so what is EE? Um, how we at the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction define it is um, a learning centered system uh, of continuous improvement that's designed to improve education for students. Uh, it does this by supporting guided and individualized professional growth and development of educators, so teachers and principals. But uh, why do we do educator effectiveness in Wisconsin? So besides uh, the fact that uh, the legislature passed a law a while ago saying that we had to, um, there are some very good reasons to be doing this. So one thing we know first and foremost is that teachers are the most important school-based factor contributing to student outcomes. So how effective teachers are is an important factor in how well students will learn. Um, uh, if you're interested, uh, these slide decks I believe are posted on the, the WISE Data um, Conference website, and there's some citations in there for, for all of this stuff. What else do we know? We know that school leadership is the second most important school-based factor contributing to student outcomes, so that's teachers and principals. These are the most important factors contributing to student outcomes in schools. Um, and that is where educator effectiveness is focused. So uh, how do school leaders actually make this contribution to student achievement? Well, we know from research that they do this through their effects on the school environment. So what does teacher effectiveness look like? What are the school cultures? How are things being implemented in the schools and districts? And that is, again, what EE is all about. We also know that teacher and principal effectiveness is not fixed. It can be improved. We know that beginning teachers improve uh, over the course of the first three to five years. Um, and we know that teachers continue to develop um, across the whole course of their career. And school leaders have an important role to play in developing that. Why else do we do that? Well, it's part of our approach at DPI for impacting educational equity. Um, and what, is, what does that mean? It just means making sure that students have the resources and educational rigor they need in their education when they need it across any race, gender, ethnicity, language, ability, sexual orientation, family background, or family income. Um, so a little bit more about um, what that means in EE specifically. When we talk about EE as a learning-centered continuous improvement system, there are really five principles that we have tried to bake into the EE system that are based on research and best practice. Um, these are a foundation of trust that encourages educators to take risks and learn from their mistakes. A common research-based framework of what is effective practice for teachers and principals. Regular engagement in educator developed goals. So a process of setting goals and monitoring them and improving over time. Cycles of continuous improvement guided by timely and specific feedback from um, peers and evaluators. And integration of all these processes in the system into the school and district um, priorities and practices. Uh, so we're going to focus on just a couple of those principles because not all of them relate to the kind of data tools that we'll be talking about today. Um, but some things we wanted to highlight. So trust matters. Um, trust is necessary to establish affecting effective learning communities, which are the basis of the educator effectiveness system. Trusting school cultures encourage risk taking and learning from mistakes. It strengthens professional culture among colleagues. And we know from research in schools where professional culture is organized for improvement. We also see improvement in teacher retention and job satisfaction, commitment to the school in which they serve and their communities. So why is trust important uh, for these data tools? Well, the purpose of these data tools is to help create a system of transparency and accessibility uh, where everyone can know what's going on in their evaluation, see the data that's being presented to them, um, see what evidence is being collected, and have genuine conversations that foster trust. That's one of the purposes and our goals 
with the system and its data tools. Uh, integration uh, was another one of the principles we talked about. And um, the system uh, should help integrate uh, into school systems and pro processes um, through the goals that inform professional learning that the school might undertake uh, to help support teachers and principals in meeting their goals. Uh, the frameworks, so whether it's the Danielson framework for teaching for teachers or the Wisconsin framework for principal leadership, these should be informing and guiding professional conversations that occur in an EE context or outside of it. We know that hiring, mentoring, and career ladder development um, work best when they're aligned with the EE process. So that, you know, we're identifying mentors based on actual assessments of their practice, um, that there are career opportunities for people based on um, their, their proven success in schools, and that also we're guiding development based on data and feedback. And then alignment uh, between classroom, school, and district goals to help drive growth across the system. And we know that when these things are in place, EE can support other initiatives that schools and districts are undertaking, whether that's curriculum implementation, universal design for learning, implementing professional learning communities among teachers or principals, all those types of things. So part of that transparency um, is about how uh, data is reported to people. Um, and uh, one of the things we wanted to highlight were the kinds of data reports that you can receive um, out of the frontline education system. Uh, I guess I should actually back up a little bit. So if people aren't familiar, frontline education um, is a valuation management platform that's online um, that the state of Wisconsin provides to schools and districts that use our state model for EE in order to help them manage the process. So this is the, the forms and the, the data collection uh, that's occurring um, for you while you're engaging in the actual process of, of doing EE, uh, whether that's conducting observations or having professional conversations between colleagues, those kinds of things. So that's what Frontline is. Um, there's a number of reports that can come out of Frontline that can help support this kind of integration for you. Um, so there's three different broad types of reports that are looking at different kinds of things within Frontline. These are all customizable. Um, you can save templates, um, and they uh, can produce data that you can share at district-wide or, or school building, data digs, whatever it may be. Uh, so this is the report writer, uh, and this will look at things like text fields. So what kind of SLO goals are people writing? It'll collect samples of those. Uh, the rubric explorer, and this looks at um, places where people are uh, indicating things on the rubrics themselves. So for instance, if you had a question like, what are the three most common components that teachers are saying they need support in? You can build a report that will gather that information out of Frontline to help support you in identifying the kind of professional learning that you wanna put on as a school or a district. And there's also the Growth Explorer. Um, and this is for things like dropdowns and, and checkboxes. Uh, so you can see, um, trends in what are the kinds of things that I've been observing over the course of the year? What where am I tagging most of my evidence if I'm an observer? Uh, what kind of feedback is coming up most commonly in professional conversations between colleagues? Those kinds of things. All right, so when we talk about EE, we just talked about the high minded principles a little bit, um, but what actually happens in practice? What are the, the things that districts and schools do to actually make this happen. Um, we've tried to boil it down to, to six main things that people do. And these uh, come up in our six requirements document that you can find on our website. Um, there are really six main elements of the system. So one is observer certification, training and calibration. So making sure that people who are observing teachers um, know the rubric that they're using to do these observations and are calibrated with each other so that observations are fair across observers. Orientation and ongoing training for teachers and principals in the system so they know and understand how 
um, their evaluations are conducted and what happens. Um, and this goes to supporting that trust factor that we were talking about. Um, regular self-review. So teachers and principals in the system must conduct a self-review as part of the process. Um, this is important for engaging in reflective feedback that is collaborative between teachers and principals. Educator develop goals. Uh, so it's both a principal and an important element of practicing the system is to develop educator goals. So this is the, the student learning or school learning objective. So student for teachers, school for principals. Observations, uh, collection of evidence and delivery of feedback. This is, you know, this is what happens when principals go into classrooms, observe a lesson, take down evidence, and then when they provide feedback to teachers. And uh, same thing for um, principals and their evaluators. And that there are regular conferences where these feedback conversations can occur and collaboration can occur um, not only between teachers, principals, and their evaluators, uh, but also between peers. So we're going to focus on uh, four of these elements um, and talk about the system tools that we have um, that support completing this work in the building. So that's the regular self-review, educator goals, observations and evidence collection, and feedback, and those regular conferences. Uh, so what are the tools that actually support this process? Well, there's the Frontline Education Employee Evaluation Management System, which we talked a little bit about earlier. We have Google um, templates, which can be converted to Microsoft. Um, and potentially, uh, you may be using some other locally developed option. A lot of people use Google Classroom or something else to support this process. Um, but DPI only supports directly Frontline and our own developed Google templates. Um, an important thing to note, um, some of you may be familiar with Frontline, some of you may be familiar with Google, um, and we'll have a number of screenshots of what's going on in front line as we go through the presentation uh, but these forms actually mirror each other um, so our, our templates that are currently available on the website uh, in google should mirror roughly what you see in front line there's some you know differences in how the the technology works uh, so there's some distinctions there um, but if you're familiar with front line or vice versa um, you should roughly understand what's going on with the form OK, so the regular self review. So why do we engage in a regular self review um, using our, our framework of effective practice? One, it reinforces educator self efficacy. Reflecting on their own practice helps them identify ways in which they can improve, lets them know ways in which they are already um, succeeding or excelling. Um, again, encourages that reflective practice. And it helps inform student learning and professional practice goals. So what are the things that I want to work on and um, what do I need to do to actually make progress with my students? So how is that set up currently in our system? There are a number of options for doing self-review. Um, it does not have to be designated at a particular time. It has to happen once in a cycle um, during which teacher is evaluated. Um, so that could be at the beginning, of a three year cycle, it could be at the end, um, or some people do have setups uh, where they do this annually, and that is allowed within the frontline system. Um, and what is it intended to do? It's just intended to identify areas of strength and areas of growth for teachers or principals on the relevant rubric, of course, uh, to help inform them of the conversations um, as they go across the evaluation cycle with their evaluators. Um, an important thing to note actually about the self-review is that uh, we recently implemented um, some new flexibility um, in the system. So for experienced teachers, those um, with more than three years of professional experience, um, a self-review can actually stand as evidence of professional practice for 19 out of 22 components in the Danielson framework for teaching. So 
Um, if you're an evaluator and you're working with a number of experienced teachers, um, you know um, what they're good at. Uh, they know what they're good at. You know where you want to focus your attention. Maybe it's a few key areas of the rubric. Um, this flexibility will allow you to do that. So um, completing and documenting the self-review becomes even more important in that context um, to know across time, where, where am I focusing my attention with this particular teacher? So why do we engage in educator developed goals? Um, because uh, we want to regularly assess and guide where instruction is going over the course of a year. Um, that these goals can be thoughtfully aligned to school and district uh, priorities. Um, and uh, provide a, a structure of feedback from the classroom to the school to the district level uh, that goes in both directions. And it can increase the ownership and engagement in the process for educators. And it focuses the work on using adult practices to affect student learning. So how does that look? Frontline. Um, it follows, uh, of course, the cycle. Um, and we talked about those um, regular conferences that occur for people um, across uh, beginning of the year, mid interval and end of year. Um, there are also customizations that are available. Um, so some districts may require um, a PPG, whereas State of Wisconsin no longer requires a separate PPG separate from the SLO. Um, some districts may also require teachers to engage in more than one SLO across time. Um, many of the fields um, are actually uh, customizable um, and uh, the, uh, uh, the reflection prompts as well. Uh, importantly, um, these forms are set up to follow across years in the cycle for teachers. So information from previous goal years um, is pulled um, from those previous forms and pre-populates um, the next year's form in order for people to be able to track their goals across time. So why do we engage in observations, evidence, and feedback? So one regular observation that evidence collection ensures um, accurate evidence when providing feedback to teachers uh, when evaluating their practice. Um, this accurate observation evidence informs the feedback that goes to teachers to help them improve. And that feedback provides input into the continuous improvement process for student learning or professional practice goals. And then frequent observations uh, help contribute to stronger relationships between evaluators and their educators. Again, going back to that principle of uh, a foundation of trust in the system. So the more frequently we can um, have contact with one another, the better we can learn to trust one another. And regular conferences, uh, these create opportunities to provide and receive feedback, guide ongoing learning across um, a year or, or um, a cycle. Um, it provides opportunities to check in on student learning or professional practice goals. Um, it provides opportunities to assess the effectiveness of prior feedback. And then again, these contribute to um, stronger relationships between evaluators, their peers, or educators. So when we talk about feedback, what is good feedback? Well, feedback is accurate. Um, this is why the training component is important for EE. Um, it's based on evidence aligned to those common frameworks. So I, as a teacher, understand the framework for teaching that I'm being evaluated under, and so does my principal. Um, now we have um, accurate feedback. Um, the feedback should be useful. So again, it utilizes that common language of a, of a framework uh, to be able to identify specific criteria um, to help me improve. It should be aligned to the priorities of the educator based on their self-review, their student learning objective, what have you. And there should be opportunities to use that feedback. So again, connecting to the educator specific context, their classroom, their building, their student learning objectives, their professional 
growth objectives. Um, and it should connect them with resources. So mentors, coaches, professional learning communities that may be in their building, professional development opportunities um, that can help them grow based on what they need. Um, so we talk about a very simple collaborative approach to feedback. Um, there's a lot of work that's been done on, on coaching and um, how to improve feedback conversations. And there are a lot of resources out there like mentors, like coaches, instructional coaches um, that can support this. But of course, um, one of the main things uh, that differentiates the EE system is there's a teacher or a principal and their evaluator. And so we wanted to make sure that um, our system, our data collection systems, um, our, our prompts um, reflected uh, something that could be doable uh, for those types of folks that aren't specialized in coaching. So first, take a look at what's working. Validate um, what's going on in an educator's classroom, in a principal's school building. Clarify, identify what's challenging, what's um, what needs more work um, with the educator. And then helping that educator identify next steps. So stretch and apply. So based on our conversations, where are we gonna go from here? But also, if uh, you're providing feedback, what support might you provide? And of course, um, evaluators uh, and people providing feedback can always improve as well. So asking and, and receiving feedback in turn. So how do we support that in the frontline education system? Uh, we've built the professional conversations log. Um, and this is designed to support any kind of professional conversation that occurs uh, between um, uh, a teacher or principal and their evaluator. Helps track growth across time and identify action steps. Um, it, dis, uh, it helps people identify um, what's being discussed. Um, what are the rubric components that we're focusing on? And it provides prompts to help guide people through that protocol a validate, clarify, stretch, and apply that we discuss. There are no required fields um, in the professional conversations log. Um, evaluators can determine what they want to include. Um, this is all just designed to be a support um, for keeping track of those conversations over time. So how does this all collect for people? Um, collects in what we call the professional growth portfolio. It's a one stop shop uh, in Frontline or in our Google setup that collects information across the various forums, across, across the professional conversations log, the self review, and puts it all in one place for people to be able to stream across time. So there's no need to go to different forums or view information elsewhere. So it collects the self-review goals, goals adjustments, um, conversations that happened in um, the various conversations, and what the various focus components might be. Um, an important point about the professional goal portfolio, we talked about this with um, the, the goals as well, um, but it also um, collects uh, end of year information so after you've completed um, a cycle, you've had a conversation with the educator about um, where, they've, where they've landed, that information entered transfers to next year's reports so that you can easily pick up the conversation from where you left off. Okay. So that's a little bit about um, how we've set up the forms be able to support the process. Um, one important thing to note um, is that districts do need to collect EE data. Um, this is actually an assurance of the annual EE grant that districts have and can produce this data. Uh, so what do districts actually need to collect? 
One, they need to be able to provide evidence that they have completed orientation training for educators and evaluators, uh, that their evaluators have certified in the relevant rubric, um, and districts provide ongoing monitoring of that training, aka calibration. These things occur outside of frontline typically. We have other systems set up to deal with those. That educators complete a self review during their evaluation cycle. That educators develop and complete at least one SLO annually. Uh oh, we're out of order. Um, that evaluators conduct required observations of professional practice. And uh, that those conferences that we talked about occur the planning, the mid year, the end of cycle. Importantly, districts that use Frontline have EE data collection and compliance taken care of for them. Um, so it's a huge benefit of using Frontline. Um, districts that are implementing their own EE management system, whether that's Google Classroom or the Google templates that we talked about, or something completely different, um, they have to make sure that they are collecting this data um, and storing it and managing it um, independently. Okay. So um, that's a little bit about how we've set up the platform, what its purpose is, how it's designed to support us. Uh, so what are the supports that you all have um, from us to be able to do this? So again, uh, uh, there's lots of links um, and resources in the, uh, the PowerPoint itself, which you can access from the website. Uh, but importantly, we have um, our GPI Help Center. Um, so this should maybe be the first stop for people looking to figure out how to um, use Frontline to support their work. Um, articles by role, so whether um, I'm just an evaluator in the system or a teacher, uh, there are support articles that can help me figure out what I'm looking to do, whether that's just log in or whether that's do something more advanced. It's specific to the Wisconsin setup and guidance, um, so this help center uh, we'll be able to provide you specific help if you're trying to figure out how can I adjust my customizations or my setup um, to meet Wisconsin needs, uh, requirements, um, and, and what's available to me. There are announcements for upcoming training opportunities, constantly webinars. We are promoting frontline webinars. We have our own webinars um, and other resources to be able to support people using the system. And of course, uh, we do have a help button. So if you do need support, um, you can uh, use that to fill out a quick form um, and get help with your question. That form goes to um, staff at DPI who are trained specifically in providing support on Frontline. Um, you can also get directed to the Frontline Learning Center from that same help center site. Um, Although you must have an account and be able to log in to access that. Uh, there are a couple other things that I wanted to show off for people. From our website. And I don't, the, the wise data conference people might be mad at me, but sort of going off. Off the, the pre approved PowerPoint here. Um, so first. Uh, the best and easiest way to find us in all of our resources is to go to dpi.wi.gov slash ee. Very simple. Um, and that's where you'll find uh, our web page and all of our, our, our various resources. So the Help Center for support, the Frontline, uh, big button down there at the bottom. Again, submit a request for help. Um, various articles, webinars and trainings that are available, all of that available for you there. The next thing I wanted to show off was our district implementation tools page. So if I'm on the EE website, I just click on district implementation, it'll bring me here. And that's where I can find resources on um, EE requirements, system flexibilities, resources to support improvement in EE development um, and implementation over time, um, access to other um, EE implementation supports, um, 
Another important place to go is also your local CISA. So we have contracts with all 12 CISAs um, to support um, not only implementation of uh, things like frontline, but also to help support people in learning how to provide better feedback, um, uh, develop better SLOs. Those are the kinds of things that CISAs can help with as well. Um, but uh, we're here talking about data systems. And so if you are looking for information on data systems, we have the documentation of evaluation processes page, and that's where you can find out about our various tools. Sorry, this is a little confusing. I have to look back. Um, uh, for meeting those uh, requirements that we just talked about. We provide resources and information about how to set up EE documentation and options. Um, that meet compliance, provide some sample options for people to use, um, and describe some ways that you might go about setting that up. The other thing that I have to promote, um, some of the screenshots that we looked at earlier, um, and some of what I described may not be familiar to you if you're using Frontline, but you're using an older version of Frontline. Um, so in 2021, um, we adopted what we're calling gross, growth focused templates. Um, and so these provide uh, the kinds of um, uh, functionalities that I was talking about earlier. Um, so if you haven't adopted these versions of the forms yet, I would recommend that you do that. Um, DPI is not really supporting older versions of the form any longer. Um, and uh, so all of our folks are trained up on these new forms. Uh, we're working with Frontline to support the new forms, uh, but we can't guarantee that if you're using older versions of the forms, um, that they will still be supported. Um, there are also resources here for setting up um, your system with the new growth focus forms, or potentially if you're looking for a change, it can help you walk through that process. Um, the front line of adopting alternative forms. So again, it talks about advocating backwards here. Uh, different options and configuration options that you can do for the self-review. For goal setting, SLOs, professional practice goals, um, how to set up um, those conversations logs that we talked about, what um, parts of the template do you want to have in there, what fields do you want to be required. Um, all of those are flexible options. Um, and again, same goes with the professional growth portfolio. Um, there are a number of options for setting those up in a way that best suits your needs. Um, so that is where I would go um, to support that. Looked at that. A couple other things I want to talk about. Um, there was one more resource on that page. that I wanted to highlight, which is a PDF resource just discussing all those various options that, that we just talked about. What are the potential bonuses uh, of, uh, of adapting the growth focus forms versus the old forms, and how you can go about setting those up to support how you implement EE locally? OK. And then um, there are a number of late breaking updates since we finished our PowerPoints for this um, conference. And I just want to highlight a couple of them. I just talked about going to the growth focus forums. Okay, important EE updates that some of you may have heard of 
um, some of you may have not. Um, one important thing to note is that uh, DPI is planning to move state model districts to the 2022 version of the Danielson framework for teaching in the 2024-25 school year. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means we'll be updating our frontline and Google templates to reflect that change. Um, and uh, you can expect that available for you when you go into those systems in 24 to 25. Um, we are also working to make sure that in Frontline um, that the data uh, will transfer appropriately. So people who um, we talked about how data in the system moves between years, that should still work uh, and apply for people. Um, but of course, we'll continue to update folks uh, as we work on that implementation in case there are any issues and how precisely to roll over your frontline platform, um, set up any new forms uh, to work in the new system and with the new rubric. Um, this does mean that districts that aren't using frontline um, or DPI templates uh, will have to update their systems to reflect the new rubric on their own. Um, and of course, we are going to be providing training and other resources uh, that meet the training requirements, et cetera, um, in advance of the start of the 2024 school year, 24 25 school year. And another important thing to point out uh, some of you may have uh, responded to our recent survey about frontline and uh, resources um, that support the, the tech side of EE. Oops. Um, but uh, just so people are aware, we are continuing with Frontline in 24, 25. Um, but beyond that, uh, we are exploring potential other options. There's a number of reasons for that. One, um, our existing contract with Frontline will have expired um, after the next school year. So we'll have to go back um, and engage in a new statewide contract if we, if we do so. And also because we are updating to the new rubric uh, for teacher evaluation, um, Frontline is no longer a, a sole um, proprietor, um, sole provider of that rubric. Uh, so there are potentially other options out there. Um, but uh, we're still ways out on that. Uh, and if people have provided feedback uh, via the recent survey, it's going to be very helpful as we shape the course going forward. OK, so that was my presentation. Any questions out there? that there's going to be additional training that is required based on the new rubric that districts have to use? Yes, uh, so uh, there will be a, a small module um, uh, additional training for people already certified in the Danielson framework. An hour or two um, that will update them to the new version and complete training requirements. Um, for teachers or for administrators? That'll be for administrators. Um, but some of that content would be appropriate for teachers, um, and they could use that as well. So it'll be freely available. And then for districts who, so we're not going to, I'm a district, we can't use the new framework. Like there's things in the new framework that are completely inappropriate for districts. Because like we're not follow policy. I know that there's a group of superintendents who are working with BPI around the timeline of this implementation again in conjunction with act 20 like there's a lot that's being put on districts to implement in a very short timeline with very short notice um so we're a district that's moving to the strong model what is the process in terms of notifying dpi of that switch if we're a district who has been using the danielson framework through frontline and now we're going to be moving to the strong model yeah so that uh uh, if people do move to the CISA 6 model, which uses the strong rubrics, um, uh, they would just notify us, uh, written by email, um, that they're doing that. Um, and obviously, you'll have to contract with CISA 6 for supports. Um, then there's the annual educator effectiveness grant. Um, so that uh, would be um, have to be updated um, that you're using CISA 6 next year. 
in order to make sure that you you get reimbursed for that. Um, but uh, that's the process, really. The, the official notice is on the EE grant, um, but uh, you should let us know in advance of, of switching over. Um, so that way we can um, get rid of frontline accounts for your for your district using DPI stuff and, and get you all switched over. Yep. Other questions out there? Any specific um, frontline questions or support that I can help with there? All right. Well, uh, I will hang out for a while in case anybody wants to talk one on one. Um, but otherwise, that's all I had for you. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and um, uh, don't forget to fill out the uh, the evaluation form, which I think um, there should be a link in your agenda, et cetera. Thanks, everybody.